We all know that the Third Reich grows to power through the will and force of one man, Hitler. But why? Why did people, for the most part, follow him in Germany? How was he even able to rise to power? How was he able to deceive his followers for such a long time? Find out as I dive into the origins of Nazi Germany. So what are the origins of Nazi Germany? When do we start seeing social changes and trends that truly affected its creation? Well, even though it didn't start in the year 1914, World War I did, and it severely affected the thinking of people and who they invested their trust in. In 1917, a year before the war's end, the Russian Revolution occurred. This affected how people saw systems of government and, when they th and what they thought would be the best way to create a strong government that facilitated order after such a time of chaos such as World War I. In this next bit, I will read a segment from Strayer that talks about how the Russian Revolution affected the world and created a new type of governmental system, fascism. In the aftermath of the Russian Revolution of 1917, some among the middle and upper classes saw the rise of socialism and communism as a dire threat. Small-scale merchants, artisans, and farmers feared the loss of their independence to either big business or socialist revolution. Demobilized soldiers had few prospects and nursed many resentments, and intellectuals were appalled by the materialism and artificiality of modern life. Such people had lost faith in the capacity of liberal democracy and capitalism to create a good society and to protect their interests. Some among them proved a receptive audience for the message of fascism. Now, I would like to take a moment to read what Strayer says as well, the definition of fascism. At the level of ideas, fascism was intensely nationalistic, seeking to revitalize and purify the nation and to mobilize its people for some grand task. Its spokesmen praised violence against enemies as a renewing force in society, celebrated action rather than reflection, and placed their faith in a charismatic leader. Fascists also bitterly condemned individualism, liberalism, feminism, parliamentary democracy, and communism, all of which, they argued, divided and weakened the nation. In their determination to overthrow existing regimes, they were revolutionary. In their embrace of traditional values and their opposition to much of modern life, however, they were conservative or reactionary. Now that we see how people not only in Russia, but throughout Europe, saw fascism as appealing, we can now focus on the first country that implemented fascism, Italy. Italy experienced severe chaos after World War I, due to the fact that some people of Italy did not like how the Treaty of Versailles laid out certain terms, such as the amount of land that Italy received. Out of this chaos came a leader, Benito Mussolini. Mussolini promised to protect and serve the Italian people in the best way possible, implementing fascist and nationalist policies in order to raise his appeal. He rose to power in 1922, three years after the founding of the German Workers' Party. The Germans felt mistreated the most by the Treaty of Versailles, for they were to take full responsibility for World War I occurring, and they had to pay reparations. The German Workers' Party came about in 1919, a year after the war's end, and it most certainly noted this situation. The German Workers' Party was the predecessor to the Nazi Party, which was founded in 1920. In 1921, Hitler became its leader. Like other Germans, Hitler looked to fascism and nationalism as a new way of governing, especially after seeing what Mussolini did and continued to do after 1922. In 1929, the Great Depression occurred, hitting hard many countries across the world. This included Germany. Before the Great Depression, the Nazi Party had little to no influence. Hitler saw a chance to lead in this crisis and swiftly made the Nazi Party the dominant group of leaders. In 1933, Hitler was installed as Chancellor, or Führer, of Germany. Mind you, this was legal. This was all perfectly legal. Hitler continued to subtly make moves of control. 
This can be seen through changes of policies towards Jews, propaganda, curriculum, the church, etc. It keeps going. In 1936, Hitler took over the immediate areas surrounding Germany without a fight. In 1938, he took over the area of Czechoslovakia without a fight. Finally, in 1939, the trend of taking over countries without a military fight was at an end. The Nazis had to invade Poland to take it over. And this is what started World War II and made the world notice how powerful the Third Reich truly was. Overall, the amount of time it took to build up the political structure that was necessary for Hitler to actually take control of Germany happened over the course of about 13 years. These 13 years when Nazi Germany was on the rise went virtually unnoticed by the world and the world was shocked when the Nazis invaded Poland in 1939. Mind you, the processes building up to this took considerably more time. As I mentioned with Russia and the rest of Europe, people want to change. Something different that would be a stable system of government. However, we can plainly see that Germany's efforts were in vain and for the benefit of only a few and the horrific death of millions of innocents. We can only hope the world will not make a mistake of this magnitude again. Thank you for watching.